Um, run for your life. I'm just trying to figure out another part. I know you guys want me to talk, but what am I going to talk about? The guy's working on the documentary thing, the film. Uh, YouTube's getting ready to pull some bull crap on the uh, 18th of September. I don't know what it is. It sounds like we're not going to be able to communicate. Like, you can leave a comment, but I can't reply. If that's it, that's stupid. They're making it harder and harder for people to to be successful. See, when I... A couple years ago, I had like 4 million views. 4 million of just stupid things. And I didn't need the money, so I didn't, I didn't monetize it. I, didn't, I wasn't, you know, looking into it. And then when I decided, you know, I should start getting paid for this, I was uh, in the process of doing it when they passed that, oh, you've got to have a thousand subscribers. Subscribers? I thought that was just, you know, people, if they wanted to keep up, you know, but it's not a thing. You have to have 1,000 before we can monetize you now. Oh. So, I'm still under 1,000, and it's been since November since I started begging. And uh, the one that got me the most uh, subscriptions was putting up that Randy Rhodes uh, bootleg, the soundboard one, which is great. It's an absolutely amazing bootleg. If you haven't heard it, go on to my site, and it's the Kalamazoo, Michigan, right from the soundboard. So it's from the soundboard tape, which was a quarter-inch uh, stereo reel-to-reel. -reel. That's why there's a, you know, it fades out and comes back in. Fades out, like, after the solo of uh, I Don't Know, I think, and then comes in just before the solo of uh, No Bone Movies. It's just no big deal because I don't like that song. Anyway, but uh, <laughs> my playing today sucks. I'm sorry. I was doing yard work yesterday for three hours trimming bushes and I wish that was a pun for something else but it's not <laughs> I was literally so my hands are killing me so I can't play for crap not that I can anyways but any, uh, at any rate um, YouTube's getting ready to pull more bull crap and I want to try to monetize you know, get some money for doing these videos. That's why I haven't really done any. It's because it's like there's n I do something crazy, like put up a video of a bootleg, which I expected to get something from, but, you know, now I've got it. And then another video of me playing this uh, Gold Top Les Paul, but it's an Oscar Schmidt uh, Washburn, which to me is superior over a Gibson just because of the price and it sounds just as damn good now and I'm playing it right out of the box and the first guy not the first guy but I got a bunch of people going like that's pretty cool that's a great guitar da, 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 da. I put this thing out like a year two years ago so this big fat grandma looking guy who's a bass player he says he's like you suck and I'm like I suck what he goes you suck at guitar. I'm like, what do you play? Besides with, you know. And they're trying, I, maybe that's why. Because they don't want people to... But you get these tr these trolls and you... It's really hard to delete them. Most of the time I just delete them. But sometimes I want to, you know, fire back before I go ahead and delete. So I call them a fat grandma looking uh, a-hole that can't play bass. And then block them. So he can't respond. Because it's done. Because he's insulting me. I insult him. And I really should just. And I most of the times I just go ahead. and Because if I, they think I suck. Who cares? You know. That's not going to change anything. They have probably. You know. Have never done anything in music. Never will. And I'm not saying that I was a rock star. But at least. I was in the business. And I did. You know. Getting a few, a few bands of mine. Got pretty good. Pretty big. And one of them is still selling CDs today. And another one could still sell, be selling CDs, but i got to find enough recording. Uh, I, I have enough of Trick or Treat. And when I put it all out, and I put that out, 
It's just one song. It's not a good recording. It's it's from a ghetto blaster that was put on stage by the monitor of, for the drummer. So you hear drums, and you hear guitar, bass, and a little bit of vocal. He didn't really want the vocal in the uh, mix. He just wanted the guitar. He went. He follows me, and the bass player. You know that's a omnidirectional thing, so it just is everywhere. And we play War Machine by KISS. <laughs> Sounds easy, right? The bass player couldn't do it. He, he just went. So I'm like, dude, if you get lost, just hit A or E. <laughs> and there's one part during the solo which we both blew. But you can, I just posted this a few days ago. Look for it. Trick or treat at the Troubadour War Machine, or Trick or Treat War Machine at the Troubadour 1987. It's me on guitar, Tony on bass, it says it all there, Mandy Lyons singing. This is before he even claims that he was in the United States and playing at Wild Wild Thing. He was in my band in the beginning. The first band he was in when he got here was my band. I just wish he would tell the truth. He keeps going, I'm, and that's a clue right there. I'm an open book. That means he's lying out of his A. Anybody that says that is a liar. No one's an open book. I'm not an open book. I don't tell you everything about me. I just tell you things that I think you want to hear. Or maybe not even want to hear. But who knows? Anyways, Mandy is full of crap. When he got here, I know it. He doesn't seem to realize that, you know, we went to the rainbow a lot. And they had to card him, and they, you know, girls, they would, you're not old enough, okay, Mario would let you in for the boys. I mean, you'd have to be like 17 or 18, but, 17, 18, 19, but guys, eh -eh, you're not getting in if you can't drink. So you had to be 21, or you stand outside, which sucked. But uh, Motley Crue got me in twice, but I went in with them, and I was 17. And uh, so when, you know, in 87, I was, what, 22, I guess? Something like that. So Mandy was the same. He was the same age as me. Actually, he was a little older. In fact, I think he might have been a year older. He was the same age as Tony, who was older than me. So... You know, Mandy keeps claiming he's 10, 15 years younger than he... Mandy is 55 years old, and that's it. Maybe maybe older. Because I saw his passport. He came over through Canada from Germany and snuck down here to Hollywood to make it big. And he was only here a few weeks, and I got him. It, at the rainbow I said dude sit down I go to your are you a singer because I was putting together a new band trick-or-treat and it was gonna be dark and heavy and blah, blah, blah. he's like yes I want to be famous I go sit down I go so what kind of you know what do you sound like because I sound like Mandy Lyon I'm like Mandy Lyon who's that and he goes that's me that's my name I'm like really that's cool so let's you have a tape he goes yes so we went out in the car listened to it and he ain't made this tape with this idiot who can't play anything but, you know, ACDC stuff. But Mandy's voice was great. It was different. It wasn't that Vince Neil that everybody else was doing. It was totally different. So I'm like, yeah, cool. I want to put together a band. We're, we're heavy. We're going to change all the lyrics to dark stuff. You know, Black Mass, Hellfire, Night of the Wolf. Trick or Treat, name of the band is one of the songs. You know, really heavy stuff. First show we did at the Troubadour was taped for a TV show that Ton Mastery was doing. We get a ton of friggin', you know, publicity from that. 
So the Troubadour immediately wants us back in like two weeks. But Joshua's wants us like two days. So we went down to Anaheim. We played there. We smoked the whole club out. It was stupid, but it was funny. And that's where that picture you see Tony spitting the blood that was taken at Joshua's down in Anaheim. And then uh, we came back. We played a few more shows. We played the Troubadour. And it was packed. And we were co-headlining with Michelangelo. So everybody was there to see this idiot that plays like this. I hate the way he looks like Mo Howard. The Mo Howard of metal is what I call him. Mike, Michelangelo Patillo. But this is like 87, so he was in his own band. And it was called Michelangelo. It's just before whatever that other band he was in. And uh, so it was friggin' packed. It was sold out. People were lined on the stairs because there wasn't enough seating. I'm like, wow, this is great. This is like, we haven't even had this band together a month. About a month. I mean, playing out. And we played the Troubadour, and it was, you know, the show that you hear, it was about half full. There was about 200, 150, 200 people, but they were in shock, including myself, because nobody knew Mandy was going to wear a G-string. So I'm like, holy crap, we're going to either go over, like, crap, or it's going to be great. And it was great. And he blows it. So the guys from Kingdom Come bought him out. They were there that night. They even came up and shook my hand and said, good show and all that. And it wasn't a good show because Rudy was on coke. And he decided that at the end of the set, he was going to do a drum solo. He didn't tell me that. So I'm like, man, holding E or A or whatever the hell chord. And looking at him and I'm like, what the hell is he doing? So I do stuff on the bar. Then I'm just like, this is stupid. So I let the guitar slide off onto the stage and I kick it out into the into the audience. And they start grabbing it. My roadie went and grabbed it back. And I walked off the stage. And I'm up the stairs going backstage and then they stop. Because at the end of the song, Trick or Treat is it. We go, Trick or Treat. And then we're done. So it's like, boom, and we're off. We don't come back for Von Korn, and it was powerful. But he blew it. So they still did the trick-or-treat, just no guitar. It was just squealing in the back, which actually I thought was more cool. It was more crazy. So everybody was like cheering like nuts. That night, those guys from Kingdom Come gave him $5,000 to quit the band. He did. The next week, we had Capitol Records coming down to see us. To, for a demo, to do a demo, to uh, get us in there and, and just, to, you know, for a demo, and then we're going to get a deal. And we were already going to Japan, I think, with Faster Pussycat. I'm not sure who the band was. Somebody that already made it, maybe L.A. Guns, but just started it, you know, and they were by 